So you guys probably know that I'm a big fan of Survivor and I have to say that I absolutely loved season 46. It was so well edited, there were some new fun challenges, the twists were kept to a minimum and most importantly the cast was amazing. Honestly if you haven't watched Survivor before I implore you to watch season 46 but if you're watching this video I assume you have seen this so there won't be any spoilers for you technically but there will be spoilers spoilers for this season. So if you haven't seen it, then don't watch this video, I guess. The first three or four episodes are a little tough to get through, but trust me, the season picks up after the fourth vote out. This cast and my love for them inspired me to go back to one of my video ideas from I don't know how many years ago, of making a Survivor Season 46 inspired Pokemon region. And by that, I really do mean just choosing 8 gym leaders, the Elite 4, and possibly a champion, and then also assigning a type to each of the characters. In my Drag Race video of this kind, I did entire teams, but for this, I just did main type and signature Pokemon that in some way relates to the editor personality quirk this cast received on the season. I'm also making this to direct you guys to my collab video with Robbie, where we gave a signature shiny Pokemon to the winners of Drag Race, both regular and all-star season, so go and watch that. Also, I did ask the cast of 46 for their inputs for the video, so there will be some of that here and there. How are we doing this? A possibly obvious choice would be to do the 8 jury contestants as the 8 gym members before the Elite 4. But then we're only left with 3 people for the Elite 4 and no champion. We could use Kenzie as the champion of the region as she won season 46, but then we would have to bump up 2 people from the pre-merge into the gym leaders. But my solution is this. The first 7 jury members and Tim are our gym leaders, with Liz and the final 3 being the Elite 4. The way they've been doing this earn the merge thing and having people be off jury just based on a rock draw is stupid. I don't know why they're doing 8 players on the jury and not 9. If it is to evade a possible 3-3-3 finale vote split, come on, that's probably never going to happen since pretty much each season in the new era we've had a zero vote finalist. And I mean, if you ask me, it should be 6 pre-jurors, 9 jurors, and 3 finalists. Well no, okay, if you really ask me, it should be 39 days, 18 contestants, 2 tribes, 7 jurors, and 2 finalists. Anyways, Back to the topic of the video. Like I said, Tim, Soda, Tevin, Hunter, Tiffany, Venus, Q, and Maria, in that order, are our gym leaders. The Elite Four, Liz, Ben, Charlie, and Kenzie, again, in that order. The other contestants will also get a role in this imaginary game, but I will not be assigning types or Pokemon to them. Yes, there are 18 types and 18 contestants, but with that there would be some less obvious leftovers, and contestants would have to be paired up with types or Pokemon, just because there are no unoccupied types left. And the champion, well, you're gonna have to wait for that one. Alright, starting off with Tim as your first challenge and the first gym leader. For Tim, I chose the Ice type. He always seemed pretty chill in the game, no pun intended, but pun intended, but he could also always get down and dirty when it was necessary. He is, however, our first pick here, so he had to get a somewhat weaker type defensively, because on his boot episode, he really did not have much defending him from going home. He didn't go down without a fight. I was thinking of giving him a Glalie, but that's a little too strong for a first gym leader, so I ended up choosing Alolan Vulpix for him. The type matches, Vulpix is a pretty viable Pokemon even though it's a first stage in a two stage evolutionary line, and I kinda like the contrast here. Tim being this big dude, a perceived challenge threat, but having a very soothing voice and captivating eyes. Kind of like a Vulpix maybe. Tim as a character in the game would simply be your first big obstacle. He won't say much to you, and after you beat him, he'll probably just say something like, cool. Next gym leader, the actual first jury member is Soda. Soda is a special ed teacher, and she seemed very positive out there, welcoming, but you know, just like a bit of edge to her. So for her, I actually first chose the Pokemon rather than the type, and I went with Ludicolo. One of Soda's main character traits showed on the show was the fact that she liked making up songs, and Ludicolo is based on mariachi, amongst other things of course, so song and music is part of its design. I wanted to first give Soda the 
water type because haha soda, but grass type fits her better, I think. Grass type is one of the gentler types that also can have an edge to it, just like soda. And luckily for me, Ludicolo is a water grass type, so either would fit. But I would go with grass type for soda over the water type. Her character will probably have a song as her introduction. The third gym leader on your journey would be Tevin. This was a no-brainer here. Tevin's electrifying personality and the fact that he was also often singing or dancing with Soda made his choice the easiest. So I gave Tevin the electric type, and his Pokemon of choice, or like his ace, Oricorio Pom Pom version. It does help that Tevin was on the yellow tribe, so he does kind of match his Pokemon here, but he won't be the last. Tevin could probably pop up before your second gym fight, telling you to watch out for Soda's ace Pokemon, and after you beat her, he will be a bit mad that you did not give him credit for helping you beat Soda. Next up is Hunter, another one of my favorites of the season. What am I saying? Literally everyone is my favorite. I love this cast. Hunter, you will find him in his gym making puzzles with his students, and his gym challenge will probably include some sort of puzzle solving. When you finally reach him, you will find him in a tree, and he'll start the fight by hanging upside down from the trunk, just just holding himself by his legs. Hunter's the normal type gym leader, and his ace Pokemon will be a Vigoroth. I contemplated having his ace be a Beware, a teddy bear that's so strong it could literally kill you, but a Vigoroth just seems more fitting, given Hunter's energy fluctuating between being very quiet and calm to being very physically capable and active. Hunter will also be the first of the gym leaders to warn you about the champion of this region, and it's fighting type Paldean Tauros that decimated Hunter's team when he went up against it. The fifth gym leader of this region is Tiffany. Tiffany, as a character, is the leader of the gym leaders, and she prides herself on being able to beat all her opponents in under 30 seconds. Now, since Tiffany told me her favorite Pokemon is Eevee, I had to look at the evolutions. Given just how smart and social she was in the game, but also artsy, elegant, and quite strong of an opponent, I chose Espeon as Tiffany's ace Pokemon, making her the psychic gym leader. Tiffany kind of like Hunter, after you defeat her, will tell you that the last person that defeated her was the region's champion. She still has nightmares from the champion's Umbreon defeating her Espeon. Queenus would be the sixth gym leader. We gotta go for the cunty Pokemon to choose a match for Venus. I was first thinking like Fermosa because it's literally a model that fights and Venus is... Well, just look at her and she fought tooth and nail but not idle apparently to stay in the game. However, I gave somebody else a fighting type so I went with my second choice for Venus, Salazzle, making Venus the fire type gym leader. Whether you liked or disliked Venus in season 46, her fiery personality on and off the show really added on to just how iconic the season is. Salazzle is an iconic Pokemon too, as it is, first of all, 100% female, as only female Salandits can evolve into it, and secondly, it was introduced with the ability Corrosion, that allows it to poison any Pokemon regardless of the type. Venus was seen as a threat due to many people comparing her to Parvati, although it's giving more Natalie, if you ask me, but still iconic. Also, Venus got a pretty noticeable villain edit on the show, and was a very dangerous player due to just how unpredictable and at times hard-headed she seemed. Same with Salazzle. Just when you think you have covered your ass with burnt heels or water-type Pokemon, Venus will come in with a Salazzle to poison your team. With all that being said, Venus as a gym leader would very graciously accept her loss. She would see great potential in you especially if you choose to play as the female player. But she will warn you from the threat of a trainer with a Melodic, who's even cuntier than her Salazzle. Also, yes, I considered giving Venus Melodic because that Pokemon is based on the statue of Venus of Milo, but trust me, it will make sense later, and I don't really see Venus as a water-type gym leader. Your penultimate challenge before the Elite Four comes in the form of Q who will play tricks on you all throughout the region until you reach his gym. Even though he may seem silly, he's a pretty strong ghost-type trainer, sporting a similar mischievous grin as his ace. Gengar. Q as a trainer will, mid-battle, tell you that he's actually going to quit. Then he will ask you a question. So... Do you want us to quit? If you answer with yes, your battle with him ends with the words BIG MISTAKE, covering the screen. Maybe like a jump scare of sorts.
Nah, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> after you defeat Q, he will probably first try to sell you something, but afterwards, he will tell you that he only ever made one mistake during his time as a Pokemon trainer. He allowed a lesser trainer beat him with his own tricks, with a grinning Bennett, no less. The last trainer that you have to beat before the Elite Four is... Maria. When you get to the city where her gym is, you will find people telling you stories about just how strong and intimidating she is as a trainer. One person even alleges that it took two Elite Four members competing in a double battle against Maria to beat her. Nobody since that battle beat her, not even the champion of the region. Maria is a fighting type gym leader, due to her incredible challenge performances and just in general her fighting spirit. Due to Maria's in-game lore referencing her loss in double battle, she chooses to only fight in double battles now to prove that her one loss was just a fluke. Maria will have a team of four Pokemon and for her I actually chose an entire team. So her main two Pokemon are Buzzwall and Formosa, but then her other two Pokemon would be Urshifu, I don't know if I'm saying that name right, and Pengoro. The first two are Ultra Beasts, the way Maria was a challenge beast, and the latter two give off such protective parent energy with their pre-evolutions in mind. And after you beat Maria, she will put up a facade out of bravery, but she will tell you to bring some fairy or ice type Pokemon to beat one of the Elite Four members. And speaking of the Elite Four, let's talk about them right away. Like I said, the Elite Four will simply be comprised of the final four of the season. Thus, our first Elite Four member is... Liz. Liz on the show, according to the postseason press, got the least representable edit, given that her entire presentation was about her being hangry and delusional. However, even with the said alleged setbacks, she still fought with quite literally everything she could to stay in the game. And if it hadn't been for her helping Kenzie in Final 5 challenge, Maria would have most probably been in that top 3 with very high chances of winning the season. So, okay, we know that Liz is hangry and we know she's crappy. She's more Pico, basically. Liz will specialize in the dark type Pokemon. I will just read you the exchange I had with Liz over this. My message to her was this. For you, I started out with the Pokemon first, more Pico, that has a full belly mode and a hangry mode. I think this choice is obvious given that most of your edit focused on you not being able to eat and being agitated. With that flanderization in mind, I chose to give you the dark type. Given the constant frustrations you seem to have experienced there, it was amazing to see that you never quit and that you continued, well, fighting by any means necessary. The dark type is usually related to scrappiness and moxie. These Pokemon can sometimes be overlooked, but they're very strong. With that, you were also presented as the anti-hero of the season, which can also correspond with the type. And Liz's response was... Love this character. Anti-hero is giving Taylor Swift vibes, so I'm all about it. Plus, I consider myself very scrappy. They didn't show it out there, but I used my lack of energy in a scrappy way. I would tell people, look, I'm not doing anything today. I'm gonna sit by and let you all talk and you can just come tell me the plan. This would disarm people from thinking I'm a threat and ensure everyone came up to me and talked about the plan. Having everyone's plan, I was able to deduce what was actually happening and be the swing vote slash deciding factor in what was happening that night. Talk about Scrappy, right? Honestly, she nailed the response. Ugh, I fucking love Liz. I have nothing else to add. After Liz comes Ben. Ben will actually be the biggest surprise here, as he's a pretty chill dude and a chill trainer who may be the easiest to beat seemingly, but he won't go down without a fight. Ben, of course, is the rock-type gym leader, and I'm first giving Ben a strategy rather than a signature Pokemon. He will use these weaker but high-level Pokemon like Rog and Rolla, Geodude, Nosepass, and Minior against you, but every single one of them will use Explosion, so you better protect yourself somehow. However, Ben will keep his strongest Pokemon, his Ace, with which he'll have a strategy that differs from the previous four as his last. Pokemon to mimic how he ended up winning his first and only immunity at final four. His final Pokemon also will not be a rock type. The Pokemon in question is, of course, Obstagoon. The third Elite Four member is then Charlie. Charlie was kind of the final boss of the season that the winner, Kenzie, had to defeat to win. He was shown as a constant threat in the season, strong in pretty much every aspect of the game, and that's why Charlie is our Dragon-type Elite Four member. He was the trainer Maria was warning you about. And when it comes to Charlie's ace Pokemon, or just like in general the theme of his team, I was thinking. He's a pretty big fan of Taylor Swift, right? Can his team be 
jet-related Pokemon? Can Charlie's Ace Pokemon be a Latias or maybe a Dragapult? Airplane-inspired dragon types? Yeah, uh, let's go with that. If you know, you know. The final Elite Four member is, fittingly, the winner of the season, Kenzie. I know that she was called a mermaid dragon pre-merge, so some might jump to the conclusion of giving her the dragon type rather than to Charlie. With all due respect to the man, we're not gonna listen to Banu. We're gonna listen to our queen, whose Instagram handle literally says she's a fairy. Which is why she's going to be the fairy type specialist. Fairy types are often associated with Pokemon that are amicable, cute, that evolve with high friendships, but that are also incredibly strong. Furthermore, her type being strong against and being immune to Charlie's type is also very fitting. However, listen, she does give off strong mermaid energy, so her ace has to be Primarina. I also decided to give ideas for some other Pokemon she could have. Given that Kenzie is a hairdresser, why not make the theme of her team Pokemon with great hair? So don't be surprised if you see Kenzie using a Mawile or Fluttermane. Kenzie actually liked these ideas when I presented them to her, so we got the stamp of approval from the winner of the season. So now you might be wondering, what happens after Kenzie? Which player from this season would be a better fit for a champion than the actual winner of the season? Well, after beating the Elite Four, you would go into a room. Ideally designed like the tribal council area. There, you will see a box, out of which will appear your final challenge. The hidden immunity idol. Yes, it's going to be a sentient hidden immunity idol that has taken out five different players this season. The hidden immunity idol trainer is who Hunter, Tiffany, Venus, and Q were warning you about, and they even told you what the idol's team was going to be. Now, that team could stay the same, so with Tauros, Paltian Form, Combat Breed, Umbreon, Malorig, Banette, and two other Pokemon, or the team could be programmed to be super effective against each one of your Pokemon on individually of course but i do think that this idol should have two pokemon that are inspired by our only two-time winners of the show sandra and tony they would be the two legendaries of this region let's say that sandra's pokemon would be like a dark psychic type and tony's a dark fighting type now, I can draw for shit, so if somebody gets ideas out of this, I would love to see a video of you creating Survivor Contestants-inspired Pokemon. But yeah, the Hidden Immunity Idol would be the champion of this region. Why not? Okay, let's talk about the rest of the contestants now. I gave everybody a specific role in the game. Though, some people have a smaller, some have a larger role, as you're about to see. First of all, Jelinski will be your first trainer battle outside your rival, and he'll have a team of six Magikarps. He may throw a Pokeball at you in frustration from losing. Randon will be your dad in this game. He was a Pokemon trainer who had a wild Pokemon use stun spore on him, which left him with a mild paralysis, which is why he stopped being a trainer. Mariah is an NPC who you need to teach how to jump off a small ledge in order to receive the EXP share, because you shared an experience of jumping with her. Even though, of course, EXP shares are not items in these new games, they're game mechanics, but never mind that. Now, the other three have a way bigger role in the story. Your two rivals are Jem and Banu. Jem being the more competent rival, a la Blue, and Banu being Banu. Jem will almost always be one step ahead of you, but she will not be able to be the champion hidden immunity idol. Banu, on the other hand, won't win any badges, but he will try to claim your victories as joint victories, with his ultimate goal being stealing the power of the champion hidden immunity idol in order to beat Arceus itself for having sabotaged him all throughout the game. Lastly, Jess will be a recurring character that you meet halfway through the game, that starts telling you that the champion is actually the idol. However, anytime she tries to tell you that, Banu will interrupt her and just dismiss her. Let's finish the video talking about the evil team and the Pokemon professor, who I think we all know has to be Christian from David vs. Goliath. He's going to be extremely helpful as a professor to you, and he will implore you to catch as many Pokemon as possible, and also to evolve them. You know, for research purposes. He will also give you like little treats, like Professor Oak did whenever you register a certain amount of Pokemon in your Pokedex. And the evil team will be led by Jeff Probst, of course. Yes, Jeff will actually own all of the gyms, and the gym leaders are technically held captive there. Except for Q. He's 
somehow able to leave because he's a ghost type trainer, you know. Jeff's grunts will include Ben and Boston Rob first, you know, anyone whose win was a setup and who was representing those good old American values. Throw in Gabler there, sure, why not? And Devons because, yeah, they were trying to bend him to the victory, but thank God for Chris. During your battles with Jeff's lackeys, who will actually be the trainers that you face before gym leaders, anytime their Pokemon are on low health, Jeff will pop up and mid-battle give your opponents full heals or full restores. So you have to try to work around that or one-shot your opponents. In the end, we will also find out that the sentient hidden immunity idol was of Jeff's creation, that he himself could not actually tame. And that's it. That's the video. I wanted to do something to appreciate season 46, and a review where I simply gush over almost everybody would not do it justice. So here's a brain fart I did. What did you think of season 46? Would you add any Pokemon to the player's teams? Please, no negativity about these people. I know that the Survivor fandom isn't as relentless as the Drag Race fandom, but you guys got some bad Applebee's in there. Anyway, thank you for watching.